Before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you ShiftSync for being the main video sponsor for today. I love communities. You can meet with like-minded people to exchange on specific topics and learn something new. In case you missed it, there is a great new community out there waiting for you to join for free. It's called ShiftSync, a place for testers, developers and DevOps specialists and others if you like so. The goal of ShiftSync is to create a dynamic and engaging space for developers, testers and industry leaders to share knowledge and grow professionally. Quality is more than testing and such sharing with collaboration will help improve the software, develop software development lifecycle on every stage. From a security point of view, code writing, defining requirements or accelerating performance and setting up high functioning for development teams. ShiftSync is a community for anyone and everyone interested in all aspects of quality engineering, from left to right across the software development spectrum. You can engage with relevant end users, practitioners, testers, developers, developer, DevOps specialists, software administrators or product managers. You can find relevant content such as blog posts, discussions, roundtables or webinars. The community creates uh, created also added gamification to solve missions and challenges to earn points and to rank with the community members. So that's a great thing. Make sure to sign up, use the link in the video description and to start your community collaboration today and find like-minded people to exchange your knowledge, share your knowledge and grow your skill set as of today. Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here. Of course, you have read already the video description because you're watching the video, right? So today's video is all about testing without requirements. And I bet we all have been there, to be honest, right? Who hasn't opened up a user story, an epic or whatever document you're using for your test case activities, for your activities at all and or for the feature development and there was no description, no requirements set. I bet we have all been there myself included. And today's video should also give you an idea like what you can do as a software tester to test without requirements and what you can do to successfully add value to your team. So let's take a look. So the title is Testing Without Requirements. So first of all, I would like to talk about what is a requirement. And I found a definition that I kind of liked because there's different um, definitions and standards out there or explanations for requirement and that's the one that I found okay. So it says a condition that must be met or processed by a solution to satisfy a contract, a standard, specification or other formally imposed documents. So that's the definition of a requirement. Or in short, acceptance criteria in tickets or any kind of information that you can put in a, in a documentation or in a user handbook or on a sticky note, for example. So that's the requirement. But there are a couple of types of requirements that I would like to talk um, with you today. So what are types of requirements? And there's this list is by no means complete. There might be other requirements um, that you have seen in your project life, in the industries, or so forth and so forth. But I try to find the more, the more, the most generic uh, requirements that I have seen in the past. So what kind of types do we have? We have architectural requirements. Yes, architectural requirements, it means that it's a system architecture is described with certain requirements, what the system has to offer from an architectural point of view. There are business requirements. What is a business requirement? Can be a goal that should be achieved, can be objectives, usually like the, the upper management gives some business requirements or business goals to, to the company to define a vision or a mission statement. And based on that requirements or that mission or bus business goals, we can derive sub requirements or objectives and work towards them, for example, with OKRs, so objective and key results. Of course, we have user requirements. Yes, what are our users? Users can be real users. Users can also be uh, internal users like stakeholders. What kind of requirements do they have um, to, towards the system, towards the process? So what, is the, what are the needs basically? We have functional requirements. And for those of you who work in software testing for a while know that 
of course, we have functional requirements, we have functional testing that we can use in order to yeah, test the application uh, towards its functionality. Is it behaving correct when you enter your password, for example, or is functionality met in towards um, um, input characters, what I just mentioned, or button clicks or whatever. So everything that is goes around the functional requirements is, is in this type. The also one that we all know as a software tester is called the non-functional requirements such as accessibility, usability, security. So everything that is not really related to the functionality of a software product or of an, a service, but is something that people require to have, right? Or they want to have at least. And last but not least, the one that I brought for you today is uh, or are regular regulatory requirements. So something that you have to, to follow by law, for example, or by a, a regulator. So in terms of you work for a medicine product, for example, you have the FDA, the Federal Drug Association, that gives you some clear guidelines on things that you have to met in order to get your product approved. So they have requirements by law or by a federal institution that you have to follow in order to be successful with your product. So these are the types of requirements. If you know other requirement types that I haven't talked about today's video, leave them in the comment section below so we can all benefit from it. Next big topic that you, I bet you have heard already are explicit requirements. Especially when you work with te as a software tester, you will no notice this kind of requirement types. So explicit and implicit requirements. I'll come to the implicit requirements in a second. So explicit requirements are usually written down. For example, in a documentation, in a user story, in acceptance criteria, on a piece of paper, on a flip chart, on a mind map. So everything that you can write down as a requirement is, is an explicit one because it's stated somewhere that everybody can read and follow up on. As I said, acceptance criteria are used to describe explicit requirements. In case you don't have acceptance criteria in a ticket, you should talk to someone in your team, to your team product manager, whoever is defining the user stories. Because this is usually like a good starting point, the acceptance criteria to meet the requirements of your service, your product, the feature that you are going to develop and to test. Implicit requirements. So what is an implicit requirement? Implicit requirements are basically features of the product experience that customers will expect. So they implicitly expect something from your application. And here we can uh, again state the non-functional requirements like an implicit requirement of a user if you ask somebody like, hey, you're using a banking app. What do you require or what are your requirements towards that? Uh, to that um, banking app. And I bet the majority of users, they will not say, okay, yeah, that should have a shiny blue button and have a, a nice looking UI. It's more like something like security, performance, it should be usable, understandable. All these kind of topics are implicit requirements from, that come from a user to your product or to your company. And this is, this is knowledge that you should have in order to have a successful product. Implicit requirements, but are not only like from a customer perspective, but also from an internal perspective, because usually implicit requirements are in people's mind. So they, they have them in their mind. For example, product managers, they, they work on a product and they implicitly require or say, I have the expectation that the product is fast, but it's nowhere documented, it's nowhere written down. If a product manager, for example, has the requirement that it should be fast, he or she is implicitly requiring that to his or her tickets, but it's not stated somewhere. And developers, they okay, okay, we do what's written down, that's it, done, and we deal with it, right? Software testers, of course, we have a different perspective because we try to think in edge cases, have the user's perspective in mind, and then we, we maybe we stumble up on these kind of topics if we are experienced enough to, to do so. If not, that might be a problem. And I'm just mentioning product managers here, but there also might be stakeholders, but also within the team, software developers and also testers can have implicit requirements that are in their minds, but nobody has written down or has talked about it. And that, that's a problem. Yeah, that's what I just mentioned. Usually not well uh, documented or written down. This might be a topic for discussion. 
And also what I have seen is this perception within teams or within companies, everybody knows them. This should be clear. I mean, I had so many discussions in retrospectives with product managers and developers and we were coming to that point like, yeah, everybody should know that uh, our application should be secure. Everybody should know that we should have like a nice, fast, shiny app, but it's nowhere written down. No, no, not in an epic, not in an objective, not in a goal, not in a mission. And this is, this is a problem because if you have in, or it's somebody in your company or in your team has this attitude that everybody should know the requirements, then you should talk to them and note them down, bring this to a retrospective because it will, otherwise it will lead to so many problems within your company, within the team. And I'll bet yours, your product will fail in order to be successful in front of customers. So how to test without requirements. For those of you who are following me on YouTube and have my channel subscribed or not, there is a video called heuristics in software testing. And heuristics are a great way to test without requirements. They help you to guide your testing activities towards a specific heuristic. Yeah? So if you haven't watched the video, make sure to follow it up here. I will put it up here and I will also make sure to put the video in the, in the video description for you to follow up on heuristics and software testing. So that's a really great set of things for you to follow up on. You can use standards to check for consistency. As I mentioned before, in the types of requirements, we, in case you are working towards a regulatory environment or requirements, use those standards that, were, uh, that are documented from this central institution and test against them if you don't have any requirements in your tickets, in your, in your user stories and stuff like that. So use them as a, as a starting point towards your testing activities. Now, that's what I just said, use regulations or existing guidelines. If you have already checked for guidelines or uh, for regulations, guidelines might be the next big topic or the next, ne next step to follow up on you for you because there might be guidelines, for example, for accessibility or for usability guidelines or uh, if we, we take a quick di a deep dive into, into mobile, there are also um, guidelines development and UI guidelines from, um, from Apple and from Google for the Android and iOS operating system. So we can all of also follow up those guidelines in order to test against something, right? Um, what you also can do is you should use your knowledge from your past job. Maybe it was a similar job that you have done in a similar industry. So you can use your, already, your existing knowledge and skills in order to test without requirements. So you can use that and transfer some testing ideas towards the product that you should test. So in case you have already tested mobile apps before and the new product is a mobile app too, you can already use some of your, your um, skills and the knowledge that you, have, um, that you have gained in the previous job in this, in this position as well. Exploratory testing, this is tightly connected to knowledge from the past job, tightly connected to heuristics and software testing. Um, use exploratory testing to, yeah, to explore a product, to make, make yourself a, a, a test session, a session charter, and then test the product um, in the best way you can without having requirements in place. Um, if you also notice, for example, that you don't have requirements in your backlog or somewhere documented in a team and you're new to the team, what I usually do is I observe the team, the company or the product. So when I come to a new project, for example, I sit down and listen, just listen, listen to the people. What are they talking? Are they talking about products? Are they talking about problems? What are they talking about? Making notes about the technology stack and everything like that. So I make notes on everything that I notice. And based on that observations, I can derive the very first testing activities on my own. Maybe just for me to explore the product and to become an expert in that product, but also to ask the right questions, which brings me to the next topic uh, is critical thinking and asking questions. So in case there are no requirements somewhere written down, you should stand up and go to talk to people who are in charge for that product. In first case, it should be your product manager or a developer. Go and talk to them. Like, why do we don't have any requirements here? We need to have them in order to be successful. And if they don't answer quite fast and you really need to do something, use critical thinking on like what can go wrong or how would the user use that in that scenario and so forth and so forth. 
this will help you in order to add at least some value to your product team, to the development team. But testing without requirements is not a good idea, right? Because you will, it's likely that you as an individual will fail, but also you as a software development team will fail in the long run. So better take the time, talk about it, bring it up in a retrospective to be successful within your team and within the development phases as well. So how to improve the situation? I mean, I just mentioned one of them is bring this topic up to the team. The retrospective, in case you're working with agile methodologies, is the first thing you should do. If you don't want like to wait for the, for the next retrospective to happen, go and talk there or bring this topic up in a stand-up. You need to improve the situation as a team. Otherwise, as I said, you will fail. Your users will not be happy. That's not good. In case you brought up the topic and you don't see any things that are going to change, step up as a software tester and support product people in defining requirements. Discovery phases or user story preparation phases are usually a good starting point for you as a software tester to help your product people, the user experience people to actually add requirements, ask questions and bring everything together. And don't, don't be too lazy or like too, let's say, oh, it's too boring to just sit down and document everything. Write it down or start a, a recording script to, to record your voice and what your guys are talking about and girls in order to be successful in the requirements phase. And last but not least, yeah, leading by example is the things here to do is the moment you notice an implicit requirement or nothing has been noted down or anything is documented, start doing it. Start open a, a wiki page in, in case you're working with wikis and start document everything what you have done. Start documenting your work, start document your, your testing activities, do it in a lean way in mind maps or in, in, in short bullet points and then share it with your team. Make it transparent and you will notice that you will lead by example and people will follow you with that because they will like or they will love what you do. I have done it myself and I got so many great feedback from developers saying, hey, Daniel, that's so great that you documented that process or that flow that we have to do once in a while. It helps me so much. Otherwise, I will lose like time and money and whatever. So go for it, do it, and you will see the improvement in your team and in the overall situation. And I bet you will have really good requirements in the near future. And with that, we're done for today's video. Let me know in the comments, how do you deal with the situation that you don't have requirements for testing or for development? I would love to hear what you have to challenge or what you have to deal with. And as always, leave a thumbs up, leave a subscription to support me. Thank you and goodbye.